Hello again. When we think about telecommunication in the 19th century, the image most likely to spring to mind is probably primitive telephones of the candlestick type with an earpiece separate from the main body of the phone. What else could there have been? It will come as something of a surprise to learn that much of the information and communication technology which underpins the world of the 21st century was invented while Victoria was on the throne and that the internet itself depends heavily upon the system first used in the 1880s. Let's start by thinking about wireless telephones. In the thumbnail to this video may be seen a very early model of a telephone which does not need to be connected with wires. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of course of the telephone, called this device the photophone and thought that it was of far greater importance than the familiar sort of telephone which he patented in America in 1876. This strange looking device was actually the first step in the technology which underpins today's internet. The internet can be accessed, of course, by radio. Much of the information, though, is carried on fibre optic cables which run under the oceans. Without these cables, which carry a tremendous amount of information, the internet and World Wide Web would struggle to cope with the demand placed upon them. Pictures, spoken words, text and moving images are broken down into digital form and transmitted along the cables as pulses of light from lasers. These are then unscrambled and turned back into comprehensible information at the other end. A lot of telephone calls and television programmes are also sent along cables in this way, the principle being precisely the same. The information is broken down into modulated beams of light, which then travel along a very thin fibreglass cable to be decoded at their destination. Traditional telephone lines do much the same thing, only it is electric current which is varied instead of light, causing a miniature loudspeaker in the earpiece to reproduce the voice of the person speaking into the microphone at the other end. It was this system which Bell invented and for which he was granted a patent. In 1878, when the telephone was still an exciting novelty, a man in London called A.C. Ball carried out a curious experiment. He arranged a microphone so that instead of sending electrical signals, it would cause a very thin mirror to vibrate. He found that if a beam of sunlight was now reflected from this mirror onto a plate coated with lamp black or carbon, it was possible to use a telephone earpiece and actually hear the words sent along that ray of light. Ball regarded this discovery as little more than an amusing party trick, seeing no practical or commercial applications for it. When Alexander Graham Bell heard about it, though, he became very excited and set out to produce an improved and commercially viable version of his own. At first, he too used a coating of carbon as a receiver and found that the speech received was, to use his own words, painfully loud. Bell began to explore the possibilities of replacing the carbon with selenium. Selenium is a non-metallic semiconducting element which was first isolated in 1817. It exhibits a very strange property. In darkness, selenium will not conduct electricity at all. When light shines on it, though, it will conduct electricity in direct proportion to the amount of light present. This behaviour of selenium proved useful not only in communicating by light beams, but also in early mechanical television systems. Having made a selenium receiver rather than just a metal plate coated with soot, Bell found that it was possible to send messages over a considerable distance. By having a selenium cell at the focal point of a parabolic reflector, it was found that no distortion at all of the signal occurred. He was most excited by these developments, more so than he had been when he finally managed to get the first telephone to work. After his experiments with what he christened the photophone, Bell wrote to his father saying, I have heard articulate speech by sunlight. I have heard a ray of sun laugh and cough and sing. So enchanted was he with this new invention that Alexander Bell wanted to name his new daughter, Photophone. 
His wife, though, would have none of it and stood firm for a more traditional name. The child was eventually called Marion. There were two chief reasons for Bell's great enthusiasm for this new means of sending the human voice a great distance. The first of these was that the quality of reproduction in early telephones, those using copper wires, was absolutely atrocious. There was crackling, buzzing, humming, all manner of distortions, and often the line went entirely silent. This was very irritating, and the completely clear transmission of speech over the reflected rays of light made a startling contrast to what was possible even with the best line carried along wires. The other great advantage of the photophone, if it could be developed as a commercial proposition, was that it would enable the tangle of wires which were now starting to be seen above American cities to be entirely done away with. Hundreds of wires were dangling from buildings and these all needed to be maintained. As well as being unattractive to the eye, their upkeep was labour intensive and every time somebody wished to be connected to the telephone network, it meant a man clambering up a pole with a coil of wire and linking the new subscriber to the system with a new cable running to their eaves. Imagine how simple things would be if the only connection necessary were to be a parabolic dish fixed to the side of the house, rather like the aerials used for satellite television. The idea of Victorian houses having such reflectors attached to the front of them is an enchanting one. The obvious drawback to the system, which in retrospect will be seen as an insurmountable obstacle, was the weather. Using the photophone required not only bright sunshine, but also needed a clear and uninterrupted line of sight from transmitter to receiver, even something as trifling as a shower of rain or smoke from a bonfire, could be enough to disrupt communications. It was this which ultimately doomed the photophone. Experiments with mobile systems, as can be seen in the thumbnail to the video, continued throughout the 19th century, but the requirement for bright sunshine really made the whole thing hopelessly impractical. It's seldom enough in America or Europe that one may be assured of constant and uninterrupted sun. This would say nothing of the difficulties which would ensue at night. Experiments were conducted in other countries with this mode of communication, but all were, in the end, failures. Photophone was Bell's name for this device, but elsewhere it was known as the radiophone, a startling foreshadowing of the future in a world where radio transmissions were not yet known. Later in the century, artificial sources of light were used. Carbon arc lamps seemed promising at first, being very powerful, but the light faded and dissipated after a short distance. It wasn't until the invention of the laser that it became a practical proposition to use light for sending telephone calls across great distances.